do you handle a boat pretty well? Pretty well, yes. We both row like water spiders. Curious about the fates of Hollywood's brightest stars from the swinging 60s? Prepare to delve into a blend of success and sorrow as we reveal the most tragic stories of forgotten Hollywood stars from the 1960s. Brace yourself for a journey through fame, fortune, and heartbreaking downfalls like never before. Uh, pull up the... Number five, George Sanders. With his sophisticated mannerisms, charming personality, and silky, deep voice, it didn't take long for George Sanders to take Hollywood by storm as a villainous and smarmy scoundrel. He showcased these qualities in such films as Rebecca, All About Eve, and The Picture of Dorian Gray. He even lent his voice to Sher Khan in the animated film The Jungle Book. In 1961, he co-starred with Tony Hancock in The Rebel before starring in Cairo, 1963. In 1969, Sanders announced his retirement from show business. He had a major supporting role in John Huston's The Kremlin Letter, 1970, where his first scene showed him in drag playing the piano in a San Francisco gay bar. His final appearance was in Psychomania, 1973, in which he was top billed and the film was released posthumously. Despite the acclaim, an Academy Award and romances with several female celebrities, Sanders was not known for his happiness. In his autobiography, he wrote, I am an unpleasant person. I am a hateful person. He also remarked that women should be beaten and were worth very little, and advocated a 25% tax on actresses so they wouldn't make as much as male actors. Late in life, he suffered a debilitating stroke that affected his speech along with several other health problems. In 1972, Sanders checked into a hotel in Spain and overdosed on prescription drugs, leaving a note that read in part, Dear world, I am leaving because I am bored. Number four, Carolyn Jones. Best remembered for her role as Morticia Adams, the macabre matriarch of the 1964 version of The Adams Family, Carolyn Jones didn't always have it easy. Neither her career nor her love life went according to plan. And just when it seemed she was on the verge of a comeback, tragedy struck. One night, while flying from Dallas to Los Angeles, Carolyn fell seriously ill. She barely had time to go to the bathroom before she began vomiting large amounts of blood. Unbeknownst to her, her severe stomach problems were due to colon cancer. She had just gotten her life back, but now she was in for the fight of her life. Carolyn decided to make the best of her bleak situation. Acting was her whole life, and she was adamant that she wouldn't give it up for anything. In pain but undaunted, Carolyn continued to act on the Capitol. As her cancer spread, and she became too frail to hide her illness, Carolyn resorted to acting from her wheelchair to complete her scenes for the season. In July 1983, Carolyn fell into a coma at her home in West Hollywood, California, and died on August 3, 1983, at the age of 53. Number 3. Oliver Reed Oliver Reed, the British actor, was as well known for his off-screen drinking brawling and outspoken opinions as he was for his roles in over 50 films, ranging from horror films to highly regarded works such as Women in Love and Oliver. Reed was notorious for his alcoholism and binge drinking. There are numerous anecdotes about his exploits, such as one night when Reed and 36 friends reportedly consumed 60 gallons of beer, 32 bottles of scotch, 17 bottles of gin, four cases of wine, and a bottle of baby cham. In the late 1970s, Steve McQueen told a story from 1973 about flying to England to discuss a movie project with Reed. They ended up on an all-night marathon pub crawl, during which Reed got so drunk that he threw up on McQueen. 
In 1974, Reed became a close friend and drinking partner of The Who's drummer Keith Moon. With their reckless lifestyles, Reed and Moon had much in common, and both cited hard-drinking actor Robert Newton as a role model. Sir Christopher Lee, a friend and colleague of Reed's, commented on his alcoholism in 2014, saying, When he started, after drink number eight, he became a complete monster. It was terrible to watch. Reed died of a heart attack during a break in the filming of Gladiator in Valletta, Malta, on the afternoon of May 2, 1999. According to Gladiator screenwriter David Franzoni, Reed had met a group of sailors from the Royal Navy frigate HMS Cumberland on shore leave in a bar and challenged them to a drinking match. During the match, Reed became ill and collapsed. Despite efforts by his friends to revive him, he died in an ambulance on the way to hospital. He was 61 years old. Number 2. Tuesday Weld Tuesday Weld made her acting debut on television at the age of 12 and her feature film debut the same year in a small role in the 1956 Alfred Hitchcock crime drama The Wrong Man. However, the pressures of her career led to a nervous breakdown at age 9 alcoholism at age 12, and a an attempt around the same time. Weld's mother was scandalized by her teenage daughter's affairs with older men, such as actor John Ireland. But Weld resisted, saying, If you don't leave me alone, I'll quit being an actress, which means there'll be no more money for you, Mama. In 1961, when Weld was 18, she had an off-screen romance with Elvis Presley, her co-star in Wild in the Country. In the 1960s, Weld went through a period of depression and seclusion, during which she married, had a child, divorced, and saw her house burn down. Although her film career seemed to be over, fans began to recognize her talent, and she became the center of a growing cult following. Special Tuesday Weld film festivals began to spring up in New York and other cities. From her screen debut in Rock, 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 1956, to Falling Down, 1993, and Feeling Minnesota, 1996, nothing about Tuesday's work was routine or expected. As Zelda in the TV movie F. Scott Fitzgerald in Hollywood, 1976, directed by Anthony Page, she had a series of scenes as impressive and heartbreaking as those of any major American actress. It is reported that Weld suffers from bipolar disorder and is cared for by her daughter. Number 1. Mia Farrow There's more to Mia Farrow than the seemingly endless battles and accusations between her and her ex, Woody Allen. The former model is also an actress and activist, having served as a goodwill ambassador for UNICEF. Born Maria de Lourdes Villiers, Mia Farrow, on February 9, 1945, in Los Angeles, her career began with the primetime ABC soap opera Peyton Place. This show was so popular that it was aired in three half-hour episodes per week. In 1966, she married Frank Sinatra, who insisted that she quit acting that same year. Their marriage ended in 1968. Farrow's big break came with the starring role in 1968's Rosemary's Baby, a chilling film about a woman impregnated with Satan's offspring and surrounded by members of a satanic cult. This role cemented her status as a bona fide movie star. She continued to work in film, television, and on stage, earning critical acclaim for many of her performances. Farrow's romantic relationship with Woody Allen led to her starring in many of his films throughout the 80s and early 90s. After her marriage to Sinatra, she married composer and conductor Andre Previn in 1970, but they divorced nine years later. Her relationship with Allen lasted from 1980 to 1992, ending when she discovered his relationship with her then 22-year-old adopted daughter, Soon Yi Previn. Farrow, now 79, has four biological children and nine adopted children. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel for more amazing content, 
and hit the notification bell so you never miss an upload. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring the stories that shape us. Bye for now.